I was a big fan of the movie um, Local Hero. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen, I can't remember his name, the Scottish director, and he did Gregory's Girl, and uh, I, I wish I could remember, I normally remember his name. And the tone of that movie, I just fell in love with it, a character-driven show. And, uh, and then I had seen a, a movie called Never Cry Wolf, which uh, Carol Ballard directed, which is, you know, these are, I guess, both fish out of waters. In, in Local Hero, Peter Riegert plays a guy working for Bert Lancaster, in, uh, an oilman, and he has to go to this village in Scotland, and he has to buy out the village so they can drill oil on it. And all the Scottish people are these crazy, wacky, odd characters, but not crazy like broad. Just, there's nothing like it. I mean, just uh, Bill Forsyth, that's the director of them. He made like three or four movies that were just brilliant. And then he tried to make a transition to sort of an American popular movie and didn't hit. But, um, and in Never Cry Wolf, um, Charles uh, Martin Smith plays a guy working in, um, he's an academic in Boston who goes sent to uh, somewhere in Alaska or someplace to study wolves. And the thing that was so striking about that, other than it's incredibly beautiful to look at, and it's another fish out of water story, and he has to get food and live in a freezing place, but it was the depiction of the Native Americans, and I'll call them Indians because, as I'll tell you a story about that when I, because I directed the Northern Pilot, Northern Exposure Pilot, but <clears throat> they were, I'd never seen them depicted like that, ever, and in anything. They were real. And they were these two guys, and they were out, and they wind up killing the wolf to get, they don't have, they have shitty teeth, and then they have beautiful teeth at the end. The wolf teeth? No, they have, they have, you know, bridge work done. Oh. They kill the wolf, they sell, sell the it. pelt, and now they've got great teeth, and they're nice guys, but they're, they were like, they were like not, you know, they were just, they were just, it goes to being an outsider. Were, I just had never seen people like that ever depicted on television, right. ever, or, or in a movie. So those two things were seminal. My friend Lance, again, is now a doctor cop, but he's up in a small town in uh, Schoharie, New York, and I would visit him, and it wasn't Northern Exposure, but he was a guy living in a small town in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York and had a VFW place that he bought and turned into his you know, medical practice, and he had horses and dogs in the middle of nowhere. And there was another, anyway, those were the things that were, and so came up with this, and I didn't want to do another doctor show. I it was like, I was not going to do that. But I knew that if you say a doctor in Alaska, why Alaska? Because, you know, they, they had talked about, you know, did we want to do it in uh, some other place? Because we knew we couldn't shoot in Alaska, and we said, nah, it's really got to be Alaska. you got to feel like it's Alaska. It's a new frontier. It's mm -hmm. where everybody goes to recreate themselves. It's everything that's loose that isn't tied down ones up there. So it would be a fun place to do it. Then, of course, we had to figure out where we could shoot it. And we went to Colorado, and we couldn't. We went to Seattle, and went to towns. We couldn't find a place. And I remember the location manager said, well, i got one more place to show you and took us to the town of Roslyn, which was 60 miles away from Seattle, over the Schoharie Pass, over the mountains, over the Cascades. And once we saw the town, and in the town, the first, it's one main street, and there was that mural painted on the wall of the camel that said Roslyn. And I remember there, I just turned to him and I said, well, the town was found by, and we knew that we, knew that we were gonna call the place Sicily. We had the, you know, but not like Sicily Tyson. I said, Sicily and Roslyn, they were two lesbos, and they basically found this town, and they basically, that's how the town came about. Well, and that was, just immediately It came just to... happened. It was the minute we saw it was Roslyn. We said, well, that's it. That's the whole story of the whole thing. And we said, great, this is going to work. And then, of course, how are we going to do it? But, and this goes back to yes is a better word than no, which I think is probably thematically the point of this whole conversation for me is <clears throat> everybody told me not to do it. My agents told me not to do it. My lawyer told me not to do it. I said, first of all, you're not getting any money to make it. Second of all, nobody's going to see it. Nobody did summer replacement shows. And so it's a waste of your time. It's just, it's just don't do this. I'm not gonna, and there, there was no money to do it. Universal made it non Because it was non-union, they had to hire another. They didn't, it didn't say Universal Television. It said we had to hire some guy, who would, a non-union guy. We had to go up to Seattle. Um, to shoot it, we didn't have money for a real crew. They would say, "Hey, you know, 
You want to be a key grip, you're a key grip. And I was directing, and they didn't want me to direct it, and I think they didn't want me to direct it because they were afraid that I was, I was having too much power in my hands or something. But I said, fuck it, I'm not doing it if I don't direct it. And they wouldn't, you know, they said, well, we're not going to, we're only going to pay you for an episode. The minimum, I said, I don't care. I wanted to do it. Why so badly, were you sure? Because it was, it, go, it, it was proprietary for me. Yeah, I think of all the shows that I did for me, I mean, I loved St. Elsewhere because I loved learning things. I'm a reader, and I loved learning about Munchausen's disease, and I loved, you know, learn, you know, coming up with crazy things. But this was it was closest to who I am. I mean, I have I'm interested in ideas, you know. Um, I can read about them. I like to talk about them. I like to think about them, and I'm interested in seeing things that are different. You know, we were going to see something that was going to look different than anything on television. I'm interested in challenges. How are you going to shoot it on a distant location? I have a family now. I have two kids. You know, I'm not going to live there. Um, so all of those things appealed to me, and I loved it, and I loved the script. And I, um, <clears throat> so I wanted to do it. And I also kind of figured out by that time in my life, I was in, I don't know, 30-something, that anytime somebody is going to give you money to do something you want to do, say yes. 